All right. Let me turn off, turn the, the volume off on Rachel Maddow, the best program on television, the most honest program on television, the most researched, uh, and uh, the most authentic. But anyway, enough of that. You've heard that before. What I am here to announce is that I am running for Congress in 2018 as a write-in candidate for the 2nd District of New Jersey. Why? Because we have some creep by the name of Frank Lobiondo that's been in there forever and has no opposition. He's a Republican. But what he has done is, and I've questioned him personally about this, is he has signed the Grover Norquist the pledge not to raise taxes and and to run all bills uh, before uh, run through Grover Norquist before he votes on them. So people of South Jersey are not getting a representation uh, from the man they elected, uh, uh, Frank Lubionda. They are getting a representation to the man that he signed his votes over to, Grover Norquist. Now, how in the world anyone in their right mind could cast a vote for Frank Lobiondo when he signed the Norquest Pledge is beyond me because we as a district, and I'm using the universal we because I certainly have never voted for him, uh, elected him to represent the will of the people of New Jersey. Do you think Grover Norquist has any fucking idea what the will of the people of South Jersey is? No, he has no fucking idea. He doesn't even care. All he cares about is that he has a signed promise from Frank Lobiondi to vote the way Grover Norquist feels. And what's Grover Norquist do? He controls, for the most part, the money to candidates uh, running, running for office. Now, another thing. Here's something that bugs the shit out of me. All this talk now, now you're going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, no, listen, I am not, I, uh, I would rather, I voted for Hillary over, uh, over Trump because I thought she was less crooked. Didn't think she was not crooked, but I thought she was less crooked. I thought she was smarter as a politician and would keep us uh, out of trouble and would do more to control uh, government spending than Trump was. And she wouldn't, uh, uh, although she was pretty much locked into Wall Street and the rest of them, uh, that she wouldn't give them as big a break as we're going to see Trump attempt to. And another thing uh, is that we're all talking now, everything health care, health care, health care. But yet not one single person that's, uh, that's trying to to run it, whether it's a uh, uh, the leader of the House, or or uh, Trump himself, uh, has mentioned the single fact that the highest paid CEO in the country last year made a, a base pay of $145 million run, runs a health care organization. Now, do you know how many clients, how many people's uh, uh, bill for health care, it takes just to pay this son of a bitch before so much as an aspirin is paid for, let alone a hospital stay or anything else. $145 million. Yet no one has even thought, not even Rachel, has even thought to bring that up. Maybe the compensation of these people is pretty extraordinary, and maybe that ought to become a talking topic on this health care issue, along with high pharmaceuticals. Now, I'll agree, you know, Obamacare is probably better than no care, but not too much better. We have to have a one-payer system. Obamacare was a, was a sellout to the pharmaceutical industry, which is squeezing our, our balls off. We pay 40% of all the pharmaceutical bills in the, in the world, yet we represent less than, three, less than 5% of the population of the world. So we're paying eight times more than our share. Why is that? Because the the uh, lobbyists uh, are dictating what the Congress writes as rules and regulations. They uh, some of the rules actually prevent us from 
to being able to negotiate, even even for Medicare, uh, being able to nego negotiate, that damn thing won't sit down, uh, uh, being able to negotiate like Canada or like any other uh, industrialized, uh, civilized uh, nation does, the the cost of, of uh, pharmaceuticals. Now you can look at the pharmaceuticals, at the company's books, and determine what the fair price is. You know. Now there's there's a couple of things that I that I myself have experience with, and I, I'm I'm a diabetic, and I I'm taking this insulin shot, and it's uh, uh, let's see what the hell's the name of the company? Uh, it's Traceba. This little pen is six hundred fucking dollars. Okay, my insurance will not, even though I pay thirty some dollars a month for prescription insurance, and I and I pay uh, uh, three hundred dollars a month for supplemental to my Medicare and, and Part A, Part B. This is six hundred dollars. Okay, for this pen, it's it's an insulin pen. I'm I don't know if any any of you use them. But there's the same exact stuff that's in that is in another thing called Trahibo, and that is $585 a pen for the same, for the same amount of, of uh, shots. And what that is, is my insurance covers $450 worth of that. So I'm paying $135 for something that otherwise would cost me six hundred dollars. Now this is crazy. I mean, it's absolute lunacy. Why this uh, one would be covered by insurance and the other one would? So anyway, not a single person has brought up the case of the high cost of the CEOs of these hospital systems, of these pharmaceutical companies that you. Uh, it's just staggering to think that a guy's making a hundred base pay of a hundred and forty five million dollars a year and how many hospital beds and how many people buying buying their coverage from this company this guy runs has to be given to him how many thousands of people's uh, uh, payments have to go directly to him before as I said before a single aspirin is paid for. Now, why doesn't anybody talk about it? Because nobody's stepping on, no no congressman, uh, Republican or Democrat, is stepping on big pharmacy or big health care. They all say they got a solution, and there is no solution till you go to one payer. 